Let's do a, uh, a car video. Why not? You know, I'm not stressed right now, but I'm uh, in a kind of mood where I want to vent. And I like to use uh, videos as a medium to vent in hopes that by venting and letting some of my frustrations out, I can kind of formulate it in a creative context and hopefully in the process inspire some people to think outside the box or to, you know, encourage people to do things like pursue health, pursue opening their minds to bigger concepts, bigger ideas, you name it. So I want to do a video right now on the formulation of a slave species. I might call it that. I'm not too sure. But I've been in states of consciousness that have gifted me with the ability to see our true potential. This is known in some cultures as Gnosis and some cultures as Kundalini. I choose to use the, the, the name Kundalini to explain this form of enlightenment, of consciousness, and biological enlightenment, because it seems to be the most uh, well-known term to describe it. But Kundalini is responsible for, <clears throat> excuse me, Kundalini opens up the consciousness to the truth of what we are designed to perceive and experience here in this reality. It opens up the nerve channels in the biology that have been shut off. It opens up the energy centers, the wheels of life, also known as chakras or chakras. Everyone seems to have a different uh, way of pronouncing a lot of these terms. <clears throat> Chakras are very real. They are a very real and very intimate part of our, of our experience, our biology. They exist within the staff of Hermes, the staff of Mercury, the cerebral spinal system. And each chakra has an intimate connection with the consciousness, the mind, the subconscious mind, the conscious mind, and the superconscious mind. So it's interesting to me that when the biology, when Kundalini awakens within the biology, it opens up the chakra centers that have had seals put on them. When those seals are opened, as the Kundalini rises, it expands the awareness to such an extent that it would, it would blow the average person's mind to actually bear witness to the truth. And Kundalini is the truth. I really don't care if I sound crazy. A lot of, oftentimes, the truth is regarded as falsehoods, or as a falsehood. Oftentimes the truth is regarded as uh, unstable or out, or just very foreign to people's awareness until it's ex adopted by the whole as being the truth. And the only way we're actually going to know that Kundalini is the truth, the only way that people are going to know that we were designed to be enlightened entities, enlightened biological entities, is if they experience it. So I do my best to try to get on this channel and to talk about it. Because in the West, within the last 30 to 40 years, Kundalini has gotten much more popular by the works of Gopi Krishna, people like Gabriel Cousins, Dr. Douglas Baker, uh, Bruce Bynum, PhD, people like Bobby Hemmett. There's a handful of people and scholars that are talking about this energy. And because I've experienced it on a handful of occasions in my early 20s, I was able to bear witness to what we were designed to be, biologically and of the mind. And it's nothing like what is happening here within typical consciousness, typical reality for people who are walking around this dimension, the underworld. Some of these concepts are hard to put into words eloquently. In many respects, trying to explain Kundalini is trying to, is like trying to explain color to a blind person who's never seen color before. But 
Kundalini is responsible for enlightening the biology and the consciousness. It tethers our consciousness. It tethers our awareness to the angelic kingdoms, the angelic aethers. It allows you to become a master of the earth, the elemental kingdom. And you see it riddled throughout uh, mythology. Most people take mythology way too literally, way too scientifically. And because of that, they don't see the massive amount of enlightenment symbology, which is just Kundalini symbology in many of these ancient cultures. There's a reason why the serpent, ladies and gentlemen, my nose itches, excuse me. It's one of the things, uh, it's, it's funny, every time I make a video, something like my nose will start itching and so, but, excuse me. It's amazing, ladies and gentlemen, how much Kundalini symbolism is actually in ancient cultures. And you see it through the serpent. The serpent and the Kundalini go hand in hand. Primarily due to the fact that when the Kundalini rises, it travels up the spine in a serpentine fashion. But you see like Quetzalcoatl, the feathered serpent symbology. You see Kundalini symbology in the, the Horus from Egypt, Thoth, Osiris, Mot, Isis, um, the goddess, uh, God, the goddess Lakshmi, um, Kuan Yin, Hercules, Apollo. Apollo is just the Greek version of Horus. And the original, the original Jesus Christ was actually Horus. But it actually even goes back further into Samaria, in the land of Sumer, the uh, Sumerian culture. But, due to the fact that the Kundalini rises up the spinal system in serpentine fashion, it's highly equated with the serpent. And there's also other stuff about the serpent that uh, I've talked about in previous videos that I'm not really going to get into in this video. About why the serpent is used as Kundalini symbolism. Kundalini, once it gets past the, the Muladhara root chakra, it uh, takes you out of the fight or flight responses of the reptilian brain. And as it climbs up the spinal staff, it opens up each ener energetic center, the chakras. But as it does that, it has to first unlock the seals that have been put on our chakra system through sorcery, subconscious sorcery. You see, they get us, they shut us down at a young age. They get us at a very young age by using symbology. Because the subconscious mind, ladies and gentlemen, understands everything about, subcon or of, about symbology. Excuse me. But we operate from the conscious mind. Most people in the West, I'd say 99% of them, don't have any clue at how their subconscious mind is actually manifesting in the world around them. We have programs that have been put into our subconscious mind. At a young age, we've accepted many subconscious programs that have become engrams and different memory... Th uh, how would I say it? <clears throat> As living adults here in the Matrix, we are still operating on many of the subconscious sorcery programs that were put on us and he we've been hexed at a young age. So there are ways to go about attempting to reprogram the subconscious mind so that it can produce the life that you want because the subconscious mind is really the magic wand it's where all that stuff that new age stuff about the law of attraction comes from manifesting your your, your dreams you name it you cannot do that unless your subconscious mind is reprogrammed through belief and, and truths, not falsehoods. We have a lot of falsehoods operating behind the curtain of our consciousness, of our awareness, of our minds. So Kundalini comes and it scrubs clean the subconscious mind, which is also the abyss. Or hell, if you look at it from uh, Christian mythology. It's actually the deepest parts of our subconscious mind. Now, the word hell, or Hades, or the Duat, you name it, can be taken in multiple different uh, you can, you, you can choose to look at it through multiple different lenses. In a recent video, I talked about how hell was actually a energetic psychosomatic chakra programming of the mind when we only operate on the lowest dictations of the electrical wattage of the lower chakra. Now, what I mean by that is that 
The human spinal system has the capability to be completely enlightened, the nerves, the blood vessels, you name it, through the activation of the chakra systems, through the climbing and arousing and stimulation of kundalini moving through these energetic pathways and liberating the tissues around these, the spinal ganglia, or liberating the spinal ganglia and opening up the, the, ner the energy pathways of the shashumna, the main column that kundalini rises up. So when I speak about hell being the deepest parts of the subconscious mind, I mean, you can take the word hell and, and use it as a metaphor to describe many things. So I don't want people thinking that, oh, you told us in a recent video that hell was the lower portion of the, the human spinal system. Yes, that's true to some extent, depending on how, you, or it's true, excuse me, depending on how you look at the word hell and what it means. From a Christian perspective, hell is the land of the... Uh, you, Hell and the root chakra go hand in hand, if that's the only chakra that you're pretty much operating on. And most people are kept alive by that particular fight or flight reptilian brain chakra. It's not that the Muladhara chakra is evil or anything like that, no. But when you're operating primarily on one chakra, you completely are imbalanced. And I'm not saying that I've reached this state where I'm completely balanced, no. But I do know that we are designed to experience much more than what we're currently experiencing. But kundalini comes in and it cleans the subconscious mind it wipes clean of it wipes all the dross and garbage out of your out of your ego so to speak it destroys the ego it crucifies the ego and that's why many people think that kundalini is evil especially people who have experienced it they um it makes their life kind of hectic <clears throat> and ungrounded after they've experienced it because it's cleaned their egos and the ego here in the land of the underworld the land of the dead here in the matrix the land of the maya the illusion the illusory realm we use as a cultural collective entity we use our we use our egos to navigate through this dimension without being driven insane because deep down in your subconscious mind you know that we live in a crazy reality you know that we're living in a hellish realm but the ego acts as kind of an armor plating so that you can handle living here. It's a survival mechanism to many, in many respects, excuse me. But, anyways, you guys, I've got the, uh, the GoPro camera running right now, I'm shooting this film at 720p at 30 frames per second. And I've got the aftermarket mic plugged in. So, hopefully, that's working. I've actually recorded videos before and had the mic plugged in and it didn't pick up the audio uh, audio track. Make sure that's plugged in all the way. Looks like it. But yeah, I mean, we we've become a slave species, ladies, ladies and gentlemen. And I don't mean that. I'm not trying to sound angry, but we've become a slave species due to the fact that we were not the enlightened beings that we were originally. That is our birthright. I'm not trying to sound new agey on people. In fact, I'm not a big fan of the new the new age movement. A lot of it's garbage. A lot of it's Wiccan based and lacks a, a firm foundation of truths. There's a lot of falsehoods in the new age realm. There's a lot of falsehoods in the occult as well. And the, the occult, for those who don't know, just means hidden essentially. And Kundalini, the topic of it, due to the fact that it's fairly hidden here in the West, it's considered an occult subject. Most people hear the word occult and due to their programming they think it's evil when it's not. Studying the occult just means that you're interested in wisdom, not knowledge, wisdom. Knowledge and wisdom are completely different. Knowledge essentially is the remembering of factoids and being like a computer to some extent, collecting data that uh, is practic practicable here in the mundane realm for you know for your job and whatnot wisdom is actually the attainment of knowing the truth understanding the laws of how the universe works or how matter is condensed into or how energy is condensed into matter through the upper upper aethers you name it but again wisdom is much different than knowledge and pursuing the study of the occult most people are pursuing wisdom they know that there's something deeper behind the scenes here in this reality that has been hidden. And who wouldn't want to uncover the truth? And to really, the only way, in my opinion, to uncover the absolute truth is to understand who we are, 
what our purpose is and why we're here. What we're composed of, you name it. And Kundalini is responsible for showing us that. There is no other science that is more profound than this, in my opinion. Because, it, because essentially, or not essentially, it is enlightenment. When you hear stories about enlightenment, Kundalini, when you hear stories about people experiencing the, the magnificence and the glory of the chakras, Kundalini, when you hear people talk about the Merkaba or the aura, Kundalini, because Kundalini moves up the spinal system, it enlightens the wand, the brain, it opens up the toroidal field of the heart, and now you can stand inside your chariot, also known as the Merkava. You can see your aura, you can interact with it, you can see the energy radiating off your tissues, you can actually interact and look at your meridians. The vital life force channels that uh, life force moves through uh, throughout the biology, it's not the only system that energy moves through, but it's one of them, it's a crucial one. But you have the Kundalini, the Kundalini has fallen from grace in the middle of the head, the throne of God, and it's fallen down the 33 stairs to God, the stairway of to heaven, which is are the 33 um, vertebra of the human spine. You hear in the Bible and religious texts climbing up the 33 stairs to the stairway of heaven. Those are the 33 vertebra of the human spinal system. Kundalini has fallen down this stairway and it's fallen into the well of non-activity around the Cossacks, the lower regions of the pelvic region, the pelvic floor, the pelvic bone. When Kundalini gets into the brain, the king's chamber and the queen's chamber, the pineal gland and the, uh, the pituitary gland, it activates the right hemisphere of the brain and syncs it with the left hemisphere of the brain. That's when you become an androgynous individual, not physically, but that's when you recognize that you are an entity consisting of both negative and positive charge, female and male, solar and lunar. In alchemical text, this is what's called the, the lovers. You see depictions of androgynous people, part man, part part female, have with halos around their heads and stuff like that. That's Kundalini. And that's why the serpent is also so often used in um, alchemical pictures and depictions and things of that nature. Going back to the medieval period and you name it, even before that, alchemy back in Sumer, ancient Egypt. Greece. The serpent is a symbol of Kundalini. It's also a symbol of the DNA. It's also a symbol of eternity. Which is why you see the Ouroboros often. Which is the snake eating its own tail in a perfect circle. The Ouroboros is the Alpha and the Omega. Alpha and Omega, A and O, the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet beginning and end, but it's a continual cycle. The Ouroboros is used often in occult symbology. You even see it being used on uh, business logos nowadays. You'll see a lot of Kundalini symbolism in advertisements because the subconscious mind knows what Kundalini is and aside from that you see a lot of uh, you see a lot of zodiacal zodiac symbolism in businesses, business advertisements, you name it. You see a lot of um, fire signs, especially fire signs are one of the best signs to use for businesses. Advertisement is a huge way to lure people in, and if you use subconscious, if you use symbols that the subconscious mind understands, and the subconscious mind doesn't understand all symbols, but if you can, if if you understand subconscious or sim. <coughs> If you understand symbols that the subconscious mind actually understands and you use them for your business, it's a great way of luring people in and getting into people's minds because you're tapping into their subconscious mind without them even knowing it. Knowing it. Because again, we, we, we don't 
We don't scrub our subconscious minds clean. We don't even have any jurisdiction over it. It actually seems to be working against us to a large extent because of the programs that we've adopted as, a, as, as, as young children. Once you get a subconscious program into a child's mind and they don't have a way to questioning it or even understand what's going on, it operates behind the curtain. Most people don't even understand that they're being hexed and, and manipulated through sorcery via subconscious uh, symbol magic. <clears throat> that programming laps over into adulthood and most people go their entire lives not even understanding that they're operating on the programming that was given to them as children. So, there has to be a science, there has to be a way of getting rid of all the accumulated garbage, both physically, spiritually, within our biology, the programming, the magic, the sorcery that's been put over us, and that's Kundalini, because Kundalini opens up the, the seals that have been put on the, uh, the chakras. What do you think the seven seals are in, in the book of Revelation? Those are the seals that have been put on our chakras, the seven candlesticks, Kundalini symbolism, the seven stars the trumpets blowing. The book of Revelation is teeming with kundalini symbolism. And it's talking about dest destruction in a metaphoric way because it's talking about destroying the outdated human template, biological template and consciousness template that we're operating on currently. It's not the destruction of the actual physical world. People take biblical texts and things of that nature way too literally and it, it just ruins their lives. Religion, to a large extent, is responsible for a lot of mental poisoning. Physical poisoning as well. I mean, the, the blade of the sword of religion is stained in blood, ladies and gentlemen. It's amazing how much bloodshed has been spilled in the name of God. What an oxymoron. What a contradiction. Blows my mind. Absolutely blows my mind. People ask me all the time, how can they begin stimulating Kundalini? How can they begin learning more about this subject? You've got to look in the right spots. Due to the fact that people, anyone, either half-witted or, or, or just half-witted people, as well as very brilliant people, can get online and write whatever they want about Kundalini. And because of that, because people who don't know what they're talking about can just write whatever they want about kundalini or make videos about kundalini you name it there's a lot of poisoning that's been going on because people who don't know what they're talking about are trying to educate people about a subject that they're not even familiar with you've got to look in the right spots you cannot trust anyone and everyone just because they're in front of a camera on YouTube or this and that you want to get some books you want to check out Bruce Bynum's book Dark Light Consciousness, Melanin, Serpent Power, and the Luminous Matrix of Reality. Again, that's Bruce Bynum, Dr. Bruce Bynum's book. I believe that's his name. If it's not, I'll correct it on the screen. The book's called Dark Light Consciousness. Melanin, Serpent Power, and the Luminous Matrix of Reality. You want to check out all of Gopi Krishna's books. The Awakening of Kundalini. Kundalini, the Evolution Evolutionary Force of Man. Some of these books I think you can probably even find on PDF format online, but I recommend buying the books. It's nice to have a collection of, of, of wisdom in your library. Uh, Gabriel Cousins' book. Um, what was the name of that book? Spiritual Nutrition. Six uh, Foundations for Awakening Kundalini. That book is brilliant because that man, medical doctor, uh, psychiatrist, and naturopathic doctor, uh, Gabriel Cousins, really breaks kundalini down to a scientific analysis and for people who are skeptical about its reality the kundalini that man does a brilliant job explaining the mechanics of how it works both spiritually physically on the biological level on the cellular level and he also ties in how diet is responsible to a large extent for priming the body for this energy to move through it he's always said that you cannot eat your way to god and i believe that but you can create a state of health within your biology, within your corporeal body, that is more conducive to allowing the uh, the kundalini energy to move through it. Because we're constipated now as a culture, most people are holding on to 5 to 25 pounds or more of impacted fecal matter, parasites, gallstones, you name it. We're, we're tied down, so to see, speak. We're far more dense than we should be for this energy to be able to move through our, our bodies. Kundalini seems to like moving through people who are very limber. Because when you're limber, ladies and gentlemen, 
when you can stretch and and get your spine and your neck and you and you have quality mobility it usually means that you're standing more erect your posture is better and in order for kundalini to move up the spine the posture has to be in such a way that the nerve channels can open up and the energy can move three freely through it because if you have a spine that's all crooked and whatnot the kundalini is responsible for taking man and completely erecting him spiritually physically emotionally mentally on the subconscious level the superconscious level you name it it's responsible for enlightening you and when this energy moves up your system it will make you feel taller than you've ever felt it will completely realign it's like astral physical biological spiritual surgery that takes place It will readjust your muscles. It will readjust your spinal ganglia. It will rewire your consciousness. It will open up the nerve pathways. It will enlighten all the electromagnetic energy stirring through your body. It will allow those solar and lunar energies that are asleep at your cossacks to rise and awaken the lamp of God. All this stuff that you see in these the Nag Hammadi scriptures, all this stuff that you see in the Bhagavad Gita, all this stuff you see in the book of Revelation in different forms of the Bible, they're talking about stuff, processes that are going on within the, bio, the biology of the human being and the, the consciousness. If you take the Bible literally, it'll drive you absolutely insane. If you take most religious texts literally, it will drive you insane. You're missing the mark. You're missing the point. They speak in metaphors. They speak in parables. It's like the 12 apostles of... The 12 apostles are the 12 cranial nerves of the human brain the human throne the 33 steps of the uh the 33 steps on the the stairway to heaven are the 33 ganglia or the vertebra of the human spine the chariot that you hear about in many religious scriptures and texts is the merkaba because it is a chariot Aside from that, it's a divine war weapon. The enlightened individual is a divine war weapon. We'll get into that in a different rant, maybe. But highly passionate about this subject because it's very valid. And what's more interesting than knowing that we can become enlightened, that we can achieve miracles, that we can perform miracles, that we can do things that are currently being told to us that are, it's impossible. You've been taught at a young age to always gauge whether things are possible or not based on what someone else has told you about what's possible and what isn't. And due to that, you constantly approach things of, it's not possible. You look at a movie and you see people flying, you see people breathing underwater and stuff, that's not possible. It only can happen on the big screen in movies and comic books, no. If people had but a glimpse of what we were designed to actually be able to do, it's like... It completely makes reality so much more interesting once you realize that we are an interesting species. We're not just a ground-dwelling slave species here to work our entire lives and not really do anything creative with our experience, our fleeting time here. I'm not trying to waste my time doing what this culture has laid out for me to do. I want to break the mold and violate all these laid out yo you got to do this you got to do that this is the meaning of life to work and to have a family and have children i like breaking molds not conforming to them because most molds everyone else is in the same has been molded by the same uh the same mold who wants to be a carbon copy of everyone else Man, oh man, oh man. But yeah, check out Gopi Krishna's books, interesting stuff. Bruce Bynum's books, uh, Gabriel no Gabriel Cousins' books. He also has a book called Tachyon Energy, which is interesting because he kind of ties in Tachyon Energy to Kundalini, which is interesting. I haven't finished that book. I uh, I got that book when I was in Virginia with my fiance, um, but I haven't finished it yet. But regardless, it's a fascinating book. Um. Aside from that, if you're interested in in raising Kundalini, you really have to start sub. You really have to start studying the subconscious mind and how it works and how it's been programmed and how it's been manipulated. 
is a great book called The Magician by Philip Cooper. It's currently out of print. A used copy is about $800 to $1,100 for a new one. There's ways of finding this book, however, if you're interested in it without having to spend all that money. When there's a will, there's a way. I have a, I have a copy of it currently. It's about 260 pages, I think. And it's about magic. We're not talking about pulling bunnies out of hats and stuff. No, we're talking about magic. Magic is the art of changing your reality based on sustained positive thinking and actual... Uh, let me read a passage for you, you guys. No. This isn't the entire book, but this is the, uh, the first 60 pages or so. Magic, essentially, is actually changing the physical world around you through sustained thought and using your will to actually change things in your life for embetterment. That's practical magic. There's esoteric magic. There's many forms of this, but... What's beautiful about this book, ladies and gentlemen, The Magician by Philip Cooper, I'm actually not going to actually read anything out of this, is that it's about harnessing and regaining the power of your subconscious mind. That man can break down the subconscious mind in a way that is so eloquent and so brilliant that when you read it, it's like you're looking at a mirror. It's like you've already read it before because your subconscious mind actually understands what the man's talking about. He, he almost speaks in symbols. It's, it's a very interesting book. I think there's a reason why this book is out of print, but we won't go into that. He also has the book, uh, I think it's called Practical Sigil Magic or Sigil Magic, and um, it's the other one. A few other very rare books, moderately rare. I wouldn't say very rare. I mean, you can find them on Amazon for about $900, but <laughs> it's a little steep. But if you're interested in Kundalini, You've got to understand the subconscious mind. I'm not saying that I'm adept in this. I'm still learning. Every day, I like to learn. Um, but there's tons of material out there to get you in, on the right, in the right path, in the right direction. Um, in my opinion, people ask me all the time, how can you begin stimulating Kundalini? Studying. Studying the subject almost creates a psycho-spiritual, physiological, biological, mental, etheric doorway opening of actually inviting this energy into your life. Study, exercise, cleaning out the temple. There's a multitude of different ways to begin stimulating this energy. I talk about it in my channel often. Getting on clean water. Yoga is a great way to begin stimulating this, this energy. But Kundalini, when it awakens, produces this almost psychedelic-like effect on the consciousness. It allows you to see the energetic pathways, and it allows you to see the energy that governs the physical dimension, the material world. It allows you to reveal the secrets of the darkness around us. Now, what I mean by the darkness is that if you flicked a light off right now, and it's pitch black, you can't see anything. In the same way, there's darkness around us on a metaphoric level because we're actually walking around this dimension and we can see things. We can see street signs and poles and fences and people and trees and shrubs and bushes and birds and animals, you name it. But that does not make up everything that on the energetic spectrum and the color spectrum. There's so much stuff around us that we don't see that it would blow the average person's mind. And that's why Kundalini, in my opinion, one of the reasons, it's infinitely uh, fascinating, but one of the most fascinating things to me about Kundalini is that it allows you to actually enlighten the eyes to such an extent, the optic nerves, where you can actually start absorbing more of the color spectrum. You can bear witness to the truth. And let's face it, if you're living in a world where you can only see 1% or less of the reality that you live in, you can't see into the, any of the etheric stuff, fourth dimensional overlapping, you name it, the energetic patterns that create matter. If you can't see that, you're not living in the truth. You're living in a falsehood because you can only see 1% of what you were designed to see. Kundalini enlightens us to the point where we can see the rest of it. And it's beautiful. It's magnificent. It's almost frightening 
because it shows you how shut off you are. It shows you how much of a slave species we've become, the formulation of a slave species. Now, when you take someone who's designed to see 100% of the color spectrum, the energy spectrum, you name it, and you reduce that ability for them to see to 1%, and they're seeing just through a narrow, tiny little lens, they're easily controllable. <clears throat> Especially when you don't provide the people who are seeing through that little lens with the ability to even contemplate the idea that they may have a bigger reality that they've been shut off from. So if you take someone with a real high IQ and reduce it down to the just tiniest little IQ measurement, by dumbing them down, you name it, they now can only operate on a small percentage of their intelligence. Now that's a metaphor for what I'm trying to explain here in terms of the color spectrum, the energetic spectrum, the particle, um, molecular spectrum, subatomic spectrum, you name it. <clears throat> Complicated subject. And I am in no way, shape, or form well versed in it. I've just experienced it and because of that I'm trying to do my best with what little I know to educate people because I think that the greatest way to actually evolve the species is through Kundalini because Kundalini and enlightenment are the same thing and enlightenment is evolution. <clears throat> There's a reason why earth looks the way it looks right now ladies and gentlemen. It's because humans to a large extent are responsible for this and an enlightened species wouldn't be doing the crap, the garbage that we're currently doing here as a species. Kundalini allows you to open up the compassion centers. It allows you to harbor compassion for the world around you instead of just thinking about your goddamn self all the time. Excuse me, I'm trying not to curse on this channel anymore, but it just really, it really irks, irks my tush, so to speak. The, the amount of ego in the human experience is incredible unfathomable unfathomable levels and layers of ego here ladies and gentlemen what went wrong how did we lose the keys to our humanity why are things the way they are here on earth I love to ask that question so keep rolling my window down because it keeps getting hot and it keeps getting cold so bear with me kundalini actually once the aura is stimulated to the point where you can see it and communicate with it it actually talks to you like it's an artificial intelligence but it's a uh, it's actual biological intelligence and that thing will protect you in a way that you've never, you can never understand, but we don't have that around us anymore. We don't have the protective, protective ovum of the earth around us anymore, of our own biology. We've lost it, and we're catching hell for violating our true biology, which is Kundalini. I have to check my phone here, ladies and gentlemen. Excuse me. Waiting for a phone call. I thought I had a missed call, but I didn't. Anyways, some of these subjects might sound foreign to you. They may sound uh, out of control. I don't care. I know that Kundalini is real. I know that's the truth because I've experienced it. And thousands of people across the United States and worldwide have experienced it. These, these Kundalini experiences are happening daily. And they're getting people to think outside the box. And that's great because you've put inside of, you've been hexed with a cube. You've been put inside the cube way of logic. The symbol of the cube goes deep. Your mind is like a cube that... I'm not even going to get into it. I'm going to save that symbolism for a different rant on behalf of this channel. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that my videos can help inspire you to see the common sense rationale and taking care of your health. Not only is this a Kundalini channel, but it's a health channel. But the irony of that is that Kundalini is health because health, real health, is enlightenment and enlightenment is Kundalini. I'm trying to inspire people to drink cleaner water, to get a water filter, to care more about the foods that they're consuming. Stop eating all the genetically modified garbage that are gene disruptors. Stop eating mind control. When you're eating garbage food, you're eating mind control. Proof of that is that you're eating mind control.